you twist your left wrist clockwise and swing it down. After he loses his balance, lock his wrist with your right hand and control his right elbow with your left hand. Finally, make a wide pivot to the right and pin him. When your opponent grabs your right shoulder, break his balance by forcing his left arm down with your left hand blade. Take control of his left arm joint and move it to the side as you pivot. Maintain control of his left arm in order to pin him face down from a seated position. When your opponent grabs your left shoulder with his right hand, use sabaki to break his balance. Pivot, grab his right wrist, and lock it using both hands. Pivot again and pin him face down. When your opponent grasps your left forearm using both hands, swing your left hand blade upward to the left. Step in forward to his right a little with your left foot and use your body weight and hand blades to control him. Take control of his left elbow with your right hand blade and his left wrist with your left. Step in to break his balance and pin him. As you raise your hand blade in a spiral motion, step in with your left foot. Then, ten con as you grab your opponent's wrist and use both hands to lock it.
This technique also has variations like the following. We have now concluded our demonstration of some basic forms, Ikkyo Udeosai and Nikkyo Kote Mawashi. Remember that these techniques can be adapted to the opponent's moves and the current situation. Consequently, there are many possible variations. However, needless to say, it is important to master these basics before moving on to the variations or trying more advanced techniques. Continue practicing the forms we have demonstrated today until you feel confident and comfortable with them. In Aikido, the opponent is pinned face down with his arm joints locked. This, you will note, is a sharp contrast to Judo's pinning and locking techniques. It is also very common in Aikido to employ elbow and wrist joint preparatory locks to obtain better control of your opponent before executing the final technique. The basic forms of locking and pinning techniques are Ude Osai, Kote Mawashi, Kote Hineli, Tekubi Osai, and Ude Nobashi. Today we will demonstrate three of these techniques, Kote Hineli, Tekubi Osai, and Ude Nobashi. This technique, like Kote Mawashi, is a combination of an arm bar and a joint lock. To execute this technique, it is important to firmly control your opponent's wrist and elbow joints by twisting his hand inward. There are many variations to this technique. Today we will practice a few basic styles.
When your opponent attempts to strike you at your face, form hand blades with both hands and take control of his arm. Next, step in towards your opponent and cut down your hand blades to break his balance. Then, with your left hand, grab your opponent's right hand and twist it upward using your right hand for support. この技では手の甲を外側からしっかりと握ることと相手の手をひねりつつ回転し肘を制することが大切です。三強の押さえ方は二強の押さえ方と違い、右手で相手の手の甲をしっかりとひねり、そして肩につけて押さえます。When your opponent attempts to strike you with his right hand, control his arm using both hand blades. As you pivot widely, grasp his right wrist joint with your left hand blade. Move behind him while you control his elbow and finally pin him face down. When your opponent grabs your right wrist with his left hand, strike at his face with your left hand and then break his balance using his left arm. Use both hands to grab his left hand, twist his fingers to the left as you raise his hand up. Turn his left elbow down with your left hand. Step in with your left foot to pivot in front of him and complete the technique by pinning his left arm. When your opponent grabs your left wrist with his right hand, first break his balance before pivoting to your right, then plant your left leg on the opponent's right side and pivot again. Next, grab your opponent's right hand with your left hand, pivot, and finally complete the technique by pinning him face down. When your opponent strikes the left side of your head with his right hand, first step in with your right foot while countering his right arm with your left hand blade, and then strike his face with your right hand. Break your opponent's balance by controlling his right wrist with your right hand blade and his right elbow with your left hand blade as you turn.
finally twist his right hand upward to lock his arm and then pin him. For Ulawaza, you must swiftly move into your opponent's right side and block his right arm with your left hand blade, while striking at his face with your right hand. Step forward to the left with your left foot and pivot to your right, while controlling the ulna of your opponent's right hand blade with your right hand and his right elbow with your left. To finish off, twist his right hand upward to lock his arm before pivoting widely to the right and pinning him. When your opponent grabs both of your wrists from the rear, form hand blades and raise your arms up, then step out and pivot to your left while swinging them down. Use your left hand to grab your opponent's right hand and twist it to your left before you pivot while controlling his right elbow with your right hand. Pin him face down. For Ulawaza, raise your arms up high from your sides and swing them down as you move to your opponent's left rear. Rotate your hips to the left as you twist your opponent's left hand using both hands. Pivot to your left and pin him down as you control his left elbow with your left hand. This concludes our Sankyo Kotehinali demonstration. Please be extra careful to learn each movement leading to the variations of Kotehinali accurately. An attempt to execute this technique from an incorrect stance may lead to an injury. Tekubi Osai attacks the weak or vital areas of your opponent's wrist. This technique can be roughly divided into two parts. Omote Waza, where you attack the pulse area, and Ula Waza, where you attack the side of the wrist. Except for the final move, this technique is essentially the same as Ude Osai. 
so it is ideal to master the basic of that technique before you attempt this one. When your opponent strikes at you with his hand, move your right knee forward as you form hand blades. This is the same movement as in Ude Osai. Shift your left knee to an Hanmi Ilimi position and grasp his right wrist so the base of your left index finger is pressing against the pulse point. Concentrate and apply pressure to that point to pin him down. この技では、一方の手で相手の手首をしっかりと固定し、もう一方の手で脈部を制することが大切です。Form hand blades for ula waza in order to block your opponent's attacking arm. Pivot and grasp his wrist so the base of your index finger is pressing against the side of his wrist. Apply pressure, pivot, and pin your opponent face down. When your opponent attempts to strike the side of your head with his right hand blade, form hand blades and block as you pivot in toward his rear. Use your right and left hand blades to control your opponent's right wrist and elbow respectively. Grab his right wrist as you break his balance, apply pressure to the pulse point, and push him forward to pin him face down. For Ulawaza, form hand blades and strike them at your opponent's right arm and face. Pivot in as you take control of his arm. Place the base of your index finger on the side of his wrist as you grab it and apply pressure. Pivot in order to take him down and then pin him face down. When your opponent grabs your right shoulder with his left hand, first do an atemi, strike his face, then pull back to break his balance. Face your opponent and ilimi to his side while you control his left arm. Regrasp your opponent's left wrist with both hands, apply pressure on the pulse point, and proceed to pin him down.
for Ulawaza, first break your opponent's balance with your sabaki movement to your left, and then control his right elbow as you step into his side. Simultaneously, grab your opponent's wrist with the base of your index finger on the side and pivot as you apply pressure. Proceed to pin him face down. When your opponent grabs both of your wrists, do an atemi as you execute a sabaki movement to your right in order to break his balance. Step forward while you take control of his left elbow and place the base of your index finger on the pulse point of his wrist as you grasp it. Pin your opponent face down by applying pressure to his left arm. For Ulawaza, do a sabaki movement to your left in order to break your opponent's balance and take control of his right elbow by stepping into his side. Place the base of your index finger on the side of your opponent's right wrist. Grasp it and pivot as you apply pressure before you pin him face down. When your opponent grabs both of your wrists from behind, use your hand blades to guide his hands up before stepping back to the left and taking control of his left arm. Grab his left wrist, apply pressure to the pulse point, and pin your opponent by pushing him forward. For Ulawaza, guide your opponent's hand up with both hand blades, pivot to his right side, and break his balance by controlling his right arm. Swiftly, pivot to your right, grab his right wrist and apply pressure to the side to pin him face down. This concludes our demonstration of Yonkyo Tekubiosai. If you are successful in mastering this technique, you will also be able to apply it to other areas of the arm and legs in order to control your opponent. You must train yourself to develop and apply the power of your center to your technique. Ude Nobashi was originally employed to defend against and disarm an opponent attacking with a knife by first pinning him face down with an arm lock and then taking his knife away. Based on this concept, we will demonstrate the technique when used to counter an empty-handed attack today.
When your opponent facing you strikes at your face with his right hand, step in with your left foot and thrust his right elbow up using both hand blades. Grab your opponent's right elbow with your left hand and reach around to grab his right wrist with your right hand. Simultaneously, step forward with your right foot and stretch his arm forward first and then swing it down. For Ulawaza, first push your opponent's arm up, then grab his right wrist with your right hand and pivot while you control his right elbow with your left hand blade. When your opponent strikes the side of your head with his right hand, form hand blades with both hands and block him using your body weight. Control your opponent's right wrist with your right hand and his right elbow with your left hand. Stretch his arm as you step in, break his balance, and finally pin him. For Ulawaza, strike your opponent's face with your right hand blade as you block his right arm using your left. Pin your opponent by stretching his right arm as you step around first with your right and then with your left leg. Now we have finished introducing the different forms of kata mewaza. Sankyo kote hineri, yonkyo tekubi osai, and gokyo ude nobashi. By now you should have understood that without exception, these techniques derive from the basic ude osai with no exception. Without forgetting the basic steps and by practicing each movement precisely, you will be able to handle any technique freely when being attacked by your opponent.
First, let's look at the warm-up exercises. In the martial arts, as in all sports, it is important to prepare the body prior to the regular training by performing the necessary warm-up exercises. Calisthenics for the joints are especially important in Aikido. Rotation of the upper body. Bending and stretching of the upper body forward and backward. Bending and stretching of the upper body to both sides. Bending and stretching of the legs. Be sure to stretch your Achilles tendon. Rotation of the knees. Exercise for the ankles and toes. Exercise for the neck and shoulders. There are a few special warm-up exercises for your wrist joints. Kote Gaishi, Kote Mawashi, and Tekubi Shindo. The body does not utilize these joints under normal conditions, so it is important to perform these exercises carefully in order to increase their flexibility before moving on to the actual Aikido training. When your opponent grabs your right hand with his right hand, step in with your left foot and grab the back of his neck. Move in to his side as you cut your hand blade down in a circular motion to break his balance. As he tries to regain control, step in and throw him down to your side with your hand blade. When your opponent attempts to strike you with his right hand, slide your right foot a half step forward and form hand blades to take control of his arm. Then, move your right knee forward in a hanmi ilimi form and proceed to pin him face down using his arm. When your opponent strikes at you with his right hand, first break his balance with the ude osai technique. Then pin his right shoulder at the base of his neck with your right knee as you apply pressure to his ribs with your left knee. Move in on your knees as you grab his right wrist inside your elbow. 
take control of his right elbow with your right hand blade and twist his arm in the direction of his head. この技では肘を制し手首をしっかりと返しうつ伏せに制することが大切です。When your opponent attempts to strike you at your face, form hand blades with both hands and take control of his arm. Next, step in towards your opponent and cut down your hand blades to break his balance. Then with your left hand, grab your opponent's right hand and twist it upward using your right hand for support. This 手の甲を外側からしっかりと握ることと、相手の手をひねりつつ回転し、肘を制することが大切です。三強の押さえ方は、二強の押さえ方と違い、右手で相手の手の甲をしっかりとひねり、そして肩につけて押さえます。